Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. My name is Arnaud and I'm the founder of the Mobion project. I talked to you about how Mobion was born and evolved over the last two years. Uh, first, I'll talk to you a bit about the history of Linux on mobile device, highlighting the recent rise of Linux first phones. Then I continue with how I went on to run Debian on a Pine phone along with the main issues we had to solve in order to be able to use a Pine phone as a daily driver phone. And uh, next I present you the Mobian infrastructure and workflow, basically how we develop and maintain this distribution along with our plans for the future. But first, a few words about myself. Uh, I've been an embedded software engineer working on embedded Linux software for almost 10 years. And uh, <clears throat> part of my job is actually to create and maintain Debian-based distributions for the embedded industry. I've been a long time free software enthusiast and Debian user, which led me to create Mobian about two years ago. And uh, I eventually became a Debian maintainer later in 2020. So first, uh, what about the current mobile OS market? Uh, for now, as you probably know, it's effectively an iOS Android duopoly. There are very few alternate choices and uh, even fewer free software available as uh, an alternative to both these big operating systems. And this raises concerns about privacy due to the use of proprietary software and long-term support because basically the hardware is supported only as long as the vendor is willing to do the effort to support it. So having community-driven mobile operating systems would be an answer to that. And uh, we're actually a few previous attempts at making Linux phones. Uh, one, I won't go through them all, but mostly they evolved into community-driven uh, projects. For example, WebOS became LunaOS. Uh, MEMO, which was Debian-based, evolved into MEMO Lester, which is based on Dev1, a uh, Debian fork. Selfish OS gave birth to Nemo Mobile and uh, Ubuntu to Touch is now maintained by the community and more specifically the UbiPorts Foundation. Only Tizen, I don't think they were picked up by any community, but anyway, all of those attempts were mostly backed by uh, corporations and uh, well, things didn't end very well as they were all dropped at one point of an or another. But then something happened and in 2017, Purism announced the Librem 5, which was to be a Linux first device using a general purpose system and chip, uh, one of the NXP IMX series. So they envisioned using the IMX6 in the beginning and finally switched to using the IMX8, which is a 64-bit processor. And so is probably better for the future. These system chips have pretty good mainline kernel support. So we don't rely on a vendor only kernel which too much differences from mainline to be able to support it in the long term. And they're very friendly to community development uh, and uh, basically they develop the software for the Librem 5 in the open and uh, are completely willing to accept external contributions. Uh, it took quite a bit of time to actually ship from the initial announcement, but then something else happened which is that Pine64 announced the Pine phone in uh, 2019, which is also a Linux first device, uh, also using a general purpose SOC. In this case, the Allwinner A64, which is also quite well supported by mainline Linux kernels. And uh, one major difference is that Pine64 doesn't do any software development themselves. 
and they completely rely on the community for that. So with these two new phones, could I be able to run Debian on my smartphone the same way I use Debian on all my computers for quite a few years? Uh, my Pine phone arrived a few days before FOSDEM 20, so basically two years ago. There were already several distros available for it, but no Debian image was available at the time. I don't count Ubuntu Touch because it's indeed Debian based, but it's quite different from a normal Linux distribution, desktop Linux distribution. So this wasn't an option for me, even though I tried it and quite appreciated uh, this system. But anyway, the Librem 5 happens to run a Debian derivative, which is pure OS. So how hard can it be? Uh, the first steps were to get the bootloader and kernel to boot on the Pine phone. And uh, actually the Pine64 community did a great job at making those available from the beginning. So I just had to clone the repos and cross compile both components. And I was able to pretty much easily boot on the Pine phone. Then I stacked a basic stripped down Debian user space root file system on top of it. Uh, was generated using Debos, which is an amazing tool for that, using uh, YAML files to configure how you want your rootfs and just generate the image pretty easily. So in the end, booting Debian on the Pine phone was quite easy, surprisingly easy even. And uh, then I should go on and try to run some mobile environment, some graphical environment on this phone. So as I was pretty hyped by uh, all the purism communication about the Librem 5, I wanted to try out and run Fosh on my, on my Pine phone. And as I figured that PureOS was a Debian-based distribution, I wondered if I could use directly their binary packages which, without doing any recompiling and something like that. So unfortunately, that wasn't possible because at the time, PureOS was based on Debian Buster, which was the stable release at the time. And my work was being based on uh, Debian Unstable and later on Debian Bullseye, which was testing. So I quickly ran into major dependency issues and in the end I resulted to cross compiling everything for Bullseye, which was not that difficult because while well, all the Debian packaging was already uh, designed for a Debian based distribution, but still it was a manual process, quite long and tedious, but in the end it did work and I had a uh, Debian running on my Pine phone and booting into Fosh and being actually quite usable. Uh, so I decided to distribute the images and set up a repo on my personal web server, build the image locally and then uploaded them. Uh, it was all a manual process at the time. Things improved a bit over time, but I'll get back to it a bit later. And overall, there was a great reception from the community for these images. And that led me to carry on development on Mobian, or at least what was to become Mobian. It was just called Debian plus Fosh at the time. And so we had to think about and solve a few issues in order to be able to daily drive such phones first one was call audio. Uh, I'll get back to it in a minute. Uh, then the battery life was a bit short in the beginning. And finally, we needed usable applications. We were in order to install them easily on the phone. 
So with regard with to audio routings, there are mainly two use cases on a phone. You have the normal use, which outputs audio to the from the integrated speaker, and all the audio streams are generated on the device itself, so to say. So you just either it's a music file you have on your phone or a video you're streaming on the internet. The actual audio stream is generated on the device itself. And then you have phone calls when you want to output audio in general from the earpiece speaker and the one of the audio streams because it's obviously a bi-directional stream one of those streams is generated from the modem and the other one when you speak on the phone is to be sent to the modem so that brings a lot of complications and uh, pretty specific processing to get all of this right. And obviously we want to switch automatically between those use cases and not forget to switch to detect and switch to the headset when one is plugged in. So in the beginning, there were no way to root calls using only Pulse Audio and actually some of the Pulse Audio modules would get in the way of how we would expect things on a phone. Uh, so we first had to patch some of the Pulse Audio source code. We also used a software that Purism had developed for the Librem 5, which is WIS. It's a small daemon which detects the status of phone calls and basically creates uh, software streams, audio streams between the modem and the main audio interface. So this is something that only applies to the Librem 5 because on the PinePhone and the PinePhone Pro, there's only one audio interface available to the system. And uh, this one has to be configured in order to route audio to and from the modem or to simply output the system sounds. So we heavily modified WIS so it would switch the audio routing use case based on the call stages and then had to modify also the calls application because it used hard-coded system calls uh, to the Pulse Audio command line utilities in order to switch to the speaker or to mute the microphone for example. And uh, actually, the, the title of this slide is uh, an actual line of code extracted from an old version of the calls application. So we came up with Call Audio D, uh, which isn't a very original name, but still it basically handles all the audio routing changes. And uh, provides a simple DBus interface for doing so. So it doesn't do much automatically, only headset detection and switching, actually. All the other changes it can do, such as selecting the, the audio routing use case, enabling the speaker or muting the microphone during a call, all must uh, originate from another piece of software which we call the DBus interface for call audio D and then it will act depending on the request. Uh, call audio D has been uh, integrated into the Fosh ecosystem and actually it originated from some discussions with Purism developers. So it's now the default for any Fosh based mobile distribution now. And the next topic was the battery life. The A64 is not really a power efficient system on chip. The modem includes its own SOC actually running a full Linux system. And we also have the Wi-Fi 
adapter which consumes quite a bit of power due to being also a separate chip. So in the end, we had to suspend the system as frequently as possible so we can save battery. And uh, yeah, in this regard, Samuel Holland did a great job at creating the Crust firmware, which allows to run the Pine phone in a very minimal energy mode. Uh, so it can be suspended and actually wake from suspend when a phone call arrives or when you press the power button. But suspend had some issues on the Pine phone, mostly related to the modem. Uh, basically what was happening is that when resuming from suspend, the modem wasn't always recognized and we would need to reset the USB link. On top of that, uh, we had to act on some pins of, this, of the CPU in order to start and shut down the modem when we were booting or shutting down the phone. And there were a bunch of commands we needed to set the, to the modem once it was powered on in order to configure it properly for the Pine phone. So we'll, all those issues in mind, I created EG25 Manager, which basically addresses all these points. Uh, it's a system daemon running in the background. And when the phone boots, it starts up the modem, checks when the modem is fully booted and then configures it. And over time, it monitors the modem status so that it can uh, re reset the USB link in case the modem doesn't come back from the suspend. It's now widely adopted on the Pine Phone and also works on the Pine Phone Pro. So still another valuable contribution from Mobian to the mobile ecosystem. And finally, uh, in order to reach daily driver status, we needed to package a bit more mobile-friendly software. This actually happened in, as part of the Debian on mobile team, which is an actual Debian team bootstrapped by uh, Guido from Purism. And uh, so, as a team, we maintain a whole lot of mobile-friendly software. For now, these are all the Forge packages for the compositor, the shell, the on-screen keyboard. We also maintain my modem manager as part of the Debian on mobile team, call audio D, and a whole lot of other mobile specific software. So in the end, the packages we want for Mobian go directly to Debian whenever possible, mostly through the Debian on mobile team. And Mobian only holds a few very specific packages. Uh, there are around 60 source packages for now in the Mobian archive. And uh, one quarter of those is packages which we need to patch and such patches cannot be upstreamed in any, in any way. So we have to carry on a boot uh, downstream version in our own repository. Uh, packages which are not accepted into Debian yet or they haven't migrated into testing. As you may know, Mobian is only a small overlay on top of Debian testing, which is currently bookworm. And so the packages which are only in Debian unstable or are waiting for approval before being included in the Debian archive uh, are not available to Mobian user. So we have to carry those packages too, and there's about 15 of them at the time. And finally, half the specific packages we carry are Mobian specific hacks or hardware specific patches. This includes uh, kernel packages, uh, bootloaders, we also have a few binary firmware packages and uh, the Mobian tweaks and meta packages 
which we also carry as part of our package. So what's the current status of Mobian and how, what are we doing for developing it? First, a few words about the infrastructure. As I mentioned previously, originally, I only did a quick and dirty repo on my personal web server. And over time, I improved things a bit by automating some tasks with shell scripts, uh, small hacks, and all of this was driven through cron jobs. But then uh, at the end of uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, sorry, we had we released the Mobian Community Edition PinePhone, which was a special edition sold by Pine64 and came with Mobian pre-installed on it. So this was a major milestone for the project. It allowed us to grow as a community and uh, it resulted in a substantial donation from Pine64 as they gave us basically $10 out of each Mobian Pine phone sold. This allowed us to buy a Norm64 build server. Before, basically, before that, we only had a, an x86 server, and so we had to resolve to uh, emulation in order to build foreign packages. And we had to integrate it into the build system and uh, the current infra infrastructure at the time. So we figured that we would distribute builds using the GitLab CI and simply make our servers be CI runners. So that way we would have the x86 packages built on the x86 server and all the ARM architecture packages would be dispatched by GitLab to the ARM64 server. It's really working well and uh, it actually saved us a lot of time in the past few months. Uh, we also have automatic package publishing when we push specific tags to the source code repo. So it build the packages basically for all the three architectures we support and then uploads the resulting binary packages to the repo. We also have a few interesting things, basically generating Docker images on a regular basis. These are used both for development and for CI to use. And recently we also moved the image build process to CI. Mobian currently supports uh, all the Linux first phones currently on the market, which are the original PinePhone, the PinePhone Pro and the Librem 5. We also support the PineTab, obviously, and uh, we provide uh, images for x86 devices so that uh, standard PCs and x86 tablets can be supported quite seamlessly. Actually, it was successfully tested on uh, several Surface Pro and Surface Go tablets. And we also have support for a few Android devices using the Snapdragon 845 processor. And these devices are the OnePlus 6 and Pocophone F1. So for the future, first our first plan is to make Debian great for mobile devices. Obviously support more devices as much as possible and maybe have you on board for contributing to Mobian. Uh, so the first thing of importance is that we want to improve Debian so it's more mobile friendly, which means we need to import a few more packages into Debian and also contribute to some existing Debian packages, which is well underway uh, at the moment. We also need to rework our um, specific tweaks and uh, hardware specific patches 
so they can be acceptable to Debian and finally migrate into the main Debian archive. And all of this will hopefully be done during the year because next year, uh, early next year, the bookworm freeze period will start prior to the release of Bookworm as uh, the next Debian stable release. So we need to reduce the Mobian versus Debian Delta in the meantime, and we'll hopefully be able to make Bookworm the first fully mobile compatible Debian release ever. So that's our goal for this year, and uh, we hope it will all go well. We also want to support more devices. So for that, we have some improvements to the build system being worked on. It should make it easier for external contributors to port Mobian to other devices. However, uh, a few words about the quote unquote core Mobian team priorities. We're a very lit small team and so we don't have time to support many devices. So we decided we would focus on mainline based only devices. So no vendor kernel will be allowed into Mobian and all the devices will support. We need to have a, um, a valid mainline based kernel in order to be included into Mobian. We'll obviously make the priority for the Linux first devices. And so I mentioned those a bit earlier, but in case other Linux first phones are released uh, later this year or in the coming years, we will very much like to support them. And finally, we'll focus on uh, a few Android devices mainly those from vendors with which we share some ethics. Uh, such vendors are, for example, Fairphone and uh, Shift phones. And actually we have currently been able to boot Mobian into text mode on the latest Fairphone 4. So we expect great news to come in the coming year. But obviously, we welcome external contributions and especially for devices which would not fit into the core team priorities. So Snapdragon 410 based devices would be great candidates for Mobian support. But as we don't have the time to support them ourselves, we would welcome any external contribution aiming at uh, bringing those to Mobian. So feel free to talk to us and uh, hopefully any device will be welcome as long as we have maintainers for those. Uh, so in addition to device support maintenance, you could also help with uh, the baseline maintenance, which is basically uh, packaging new software for Mobian and uh, helping us update existing packages. And we also need a lot of help on QA and more generally testing. So feel free to reach out to us on one of those channels. We're mostly active on Matrix, but our channel is bridged to IRC too. And you can monitor development on both the Mobian GitLab and the Debian on Mobile group on uh, Salsa, which is Debian's GitLab instance. Thank you for watching this video and uh, I'll be available in the chat to answer the questions you might have about this talk. Thanks.